My dad and I found a dead camper in Yellowstone when I was five or six. We were walking, throwing stones into the lake. It was like every feel-good vacation movie you've ever seen. Then we saw this guy slumped against a tree. At first, we didn't think much of it, but it was getting cold and dark, and my dad didn't want the guy to fall asleep and wake up, unable to find his way back to camp. So my dad and I started walking towards him, but the closer we got, the worse it smelt. Not like rotting flesh, but like shit. Literally like shit. My dad told me to stay back, and walked over to the guy and asked him if he was okay. No response. He asked again. Still no response. My dad then tapped the guy's shoulder, and the body made a sort of crunching noise, and it fell slightly to the side. When this happened, the guy's hat fell off. Because of the way the guy had been slanted, it was like the blood had gone out of half the guy's face and pulled in on the other side. One eye was completely red, possibly from a burst blood vessel. My dad rushed over to me and took me back to the camp ranger's fort place. He had me stay with some nice lady, whom I remember looked distinctly like Big Bird. Well, he led a ranger and a paramedic who was on site to the body. It wasn't a horrifying, oh my god, I got attacked by a bear type scenario. But it was scary being in a pretty secluded area, far away from home, and finding a dead body. Background. I work summers as a camp counsellor in the northern parts of Ontario, Canada. On the date this particular incident occurred, I was camping with a group of 10 year old boys on the same lake the summer camp was based on. So, like a routine camping trip, we canoe out to the site and set up our tents. Me and my co-counsellor, Mike, take turns supervising the kids while they swim, build forts and play games etc. We cook some food over the fire, sit around and tell stories, cook s'mores, the typical Canadian camping experience. Around 9.30ish, I tell the kids it's time for bed and they go into their tents which were positioned a small walk away from the shoreline, but still in line of sight from where we had the fire pit. So the kids have gone to bed and me and Mike are shooting the shit by the water smoking a cigarette, just basically hanging out before we decide to head into our tent and call it a night. What happened next still troubles me to this day and remains my go-to scary campfire story. We were both gazing into the pitch black night water when we saw a small light approaching us slowly and slightly above the water level. We speculated what it could possibly be for a few minutes, before it came close enough for us to see that it was mounted on the front of a kayak and that someone was approaching our campsite. Now, it is important to note that as a camp counsellor, part of our training goes over how to deal with stranger encounters in an environment where we are responsible for a group of children on public property. I was prepared to give the mystery paddler the typical speech about how we are camping with a group from a recognised organisation and we would respectfully ask that they find another campsite. However, this person's appearance shook me to the bone as the light drew nearer. Paddling this kayak was a woman who looked to be in her 60s. She had incredibly long wisps of grey hair that was trailing in the water. Her skin looked like old leather and her dead looking eyes were tough to spot under all her wrinkles. She looked directly at me and when she spoke I realised she was missing most of her teeth. Are all your children safe in bed? She asked me, pointing in the direction of the tents. Not really knowing how to respond and quite frankly shitting myself, I responded by telling her that they were fine and she had to leave. That's good, just as expected for this time, she said with a smile. Then she turned her kayak and paddled off into the night. At this point in time, myself and Mike were legitimately very creeped out, not only by the appearance of the mystery woman who resembled a freaking corpse, but also her inquiry on the whereabouts and safety of the kids we had brought on this trip. Not knowing what else to do, we grabbed our hunting knives and sat by the fire after checking on the kids. Half an hour later is where shit really started to get creepy. Across the lake, a female counsellor was leading another trip for kids the same age group. She sent me a text which read something along the lines of, Hey Sean, stop screwing with us, this isn't funny, my kids are really creeped out. I instantly called her and let her know that I had just seen someone near my campsite that seemed eerie and that I was not trying to play a joke. Apparently one of their kids had opened their tent door to take a piss 
and seen a woman with long hair standing with her arms opened towards them near the shoreline. I worked at a camp in North Georgia, and we took kids to the Appalachian Trail around the city of Delanago. This also happens to be the same place that the Army Rangers trained. On a nice night, we cowboy camped on a tarp because it was cooler and easier than setting up an A-frame. One morning, about 15 years back, a college girl counselor woke up with a knife stuck in the ground next to her face. Attached was a note that said, we could have killed you last night. Two years ago, we were camping at a place called Lake Glenbourne in Australia. Now to set the scene, two mates were sitting around a fire. One was getting something from his car. I was passed out in my tent and another mate was down at the tap rinsing his plate about 50 meters away from the fire. He got smashed in the head with a beer bottle. At first, they thought it was me, thinking I drunkenly stumbled out of my tent to take a piss and had thrown the bottle. They went and checked and I was still out cold in my tent. There was nobody else around the camping area, hadn't seen a single person since we got there. Talking about it the next day, we narrowed the options down to a ghost, a cereal bottler, or a bird dropping the bottle after trying to fly away with it. We decided to go with the cereal bottler, and now every year, we keep a vigilant lookout for the Glenbourne Bottler. <laughs>